Hello. Thank you for subscribing this Shida.co channel. This is my first story which I plan to share my experience, opinions, and most, impo most importantly, passion to Sashiko. Today's topic is what is Sashiko and what is not Sashiko. As you may have found this video by searching with a keyword of Sashiko, Japanese sashiko stitching is getting popular day by day. As a sashiko professional, I occasionally search for the keyword of sashiko and learn what people are talking about it. Then I came to realize there are a lot of discussion out there in defining sashiko. Simply, what is sashiko and what is not sashiko? In order to be a part of this discussion as a Japanese, native Japanese, as well as a sashiko practitioner, I would need to explain the origin of sashiko. Then I will share my opinion, opinion of what is sashiko and what is not sashiko. Well, long story short, there's no such a thing as right and wrong sashiko, in my opinion. So just re let's relax and hear my story. So let's talk about Sashiko's origin. Sashiko was developed in a poor, undeveloped community in Japan. Those Japanese, who mainly lived in the rural area of Japan, didn't have enough asset, money, land, asset to purchase the new textile. Also, those Japanese didn't have access to the fine cotton fabric. So it's not warm, right? It's very poor made. To overcome the situation like that, they used needle and thread. They just used the needle and thread to make a fabric stronger. Sashiko was developed for that purpose of surviving through the days, especially in winters, by repairing, mending, strengthening the fabric. It is the deep down origin of Sashiko, deep down. Later on the history, Japanese history, in some region of Japan where they had a bit more mild economy, they started enjoying sashiko for the decorative purpose. However, the Japanese with wealth, a lot of money, mainly enjoy the beautiful kimonos, which is more like formal Japanese dress or wear. Uh, so sashiko was for like ordinary people and probably less than, like, poor than ordinary. And there was a purpose of mending, repairing, and strengthening the fabric, even if they had a little bit of money to buy extra cloth, extra fabric, extra textile. Those who enjoyed sashiko with the patterns also didn't have enough skills to dye out patterns. There are a lot of very beautiful Japanese dyeing techniques with indigo, such as katazome or shibori, they didn't have that much skill to do that. They used the plain indigo fabric simply because it was the most common fabric available back in Japan, then stitched the patterns out with the purpose to make fabric stronger and thicker with white thread. This is the combination as known as the Japanese traditional sashiko combination, indigo and white thread. Regardless of when in the history, sashiko existed for the purpose of their life. Therefore, when they see a hand-stitched culture with a purpose, which can be any purpose, I would be happy to call them sashiko. In a different culture, in a different location in the world, it may be called differently. Each community and each location had developed its own culture Therefore, it is a bit thoughtless to say that one type of sashiko is right and the other is wrong. So, if it is stitched by hand for the purpose, especially with appreciation, appreciation to what we have already, I would definitely call it sashiko even if the stitches are not even. Uh, let me talk about a slow stitch a little bit. Let's talk about the interesting word, slow stitch. 
I occasionally hear that people understand there are some rules in Sashiko. Let's say the stitch size should be always equal. The space in between the stitches have to be the certain percentage of the actual stitches. Well, I do not follow much of those rules. Because of these rules, the stitching tends to be very slow and some of the stitches stitching very very slow and I understand it there's a beauty in that. Uh, if I have to be careful with each stitch for the length and space in between, yes I would probably need to be make a stitch one by one. Uh, let me show you that. If I have to measure the stitch one by one, like this, if I have to make sure that I am making a certain stitch, I would stitch like this. And then make sure that I have a good size of stitch all the time. Doesn't focus, I'm sorry. Right. So this is, if you understand this is the slow stitch, it is slow stitch. And if you feel comfortable doing that, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. I'm not going to criticize that. I'm not here to judge. However, Sashiko is slow stitch, as you can tell, because of its hand stitch. I, I you know, hand stitch this one all by my hand took about four hours to do so. However, if, like, you know, sorry, the Tashiko is slow stitch because of its hand stitch. If I use the sewing machine, I can sew up the things much, much faster. However, however, I want to mention that stitching speed was, and still is, a great part of Sashiko. If the stitching was too slow, the Japanese would, the, the Japanese in the past, would have suffered more in this cold, severe cold winter. So instead of they, the Japanese stitched one by one, they stitched like this. The reason is because they had to mend. They had a purpose to stitch. So stitching itself was not a purpose. There was a kind of purpose to the stitching for. Therefore, the stitching itself was supposed to be kind of speedy. Otherwise, they would have suffered in the cold weather. If somebody's freezing, you might want to stitch faster. Therefore, I advocate that unshin, which is the needlework in Japanese word, is one of the core techniques of sashiko stitching. To be honest, for that matter, I would say the speed was much more important than the actual size of each stitch. Yes. Let me bring it in my back. Yes, a size of the rice grain looks perfect, and they say it is the size we aim for, but it is the matter of result of running stitch, not measuring stitch by stitch. So what is Sashiko? In my opinion, if you hand stitch the fabric with a purpose, it is Sashiko, either slow stitch or fast stitch, hand stitching though. I do not believe that there is a universal rule or regulation for Sashiko. There are, of course, sashiko techniques and wisdom to make the result more beautiful and more attractive. It is your choice and the preference to learn and choose on, not the rule by someone. Sashiko is a form, and actually a process, of stitching to appreciate the fabric. And what we have, I'm sorry, sashiko is a form and a process of stitching to appreciate the fabric and what we have. The purpose of stitching can be anything. Upcycle, repurpose, recycle, decorate, you know, you know, whatever you can think of is great. It was an ordinary, Sashiko was an or, or I cannot say this word, ordinary needlework for Japanese. I would like to keep it that way instead of regulating it strictly by implementing some rules. To learn more about Sashiko and its history, culture behind it, and technique, please visit our website. I write a lot of stories 
this is my first time to be on the video because I am not good at it, as you can tell. I even wrote the script, so I'm sorry if I'm kind of reading it. Again, English is not my first language, so please forgive me that. But I do write a lot of stories on my website introducing what is Sashiko, what is the good resource. With, you know, you can get a lot of information from there. Uh, it, it is upcyclestitches.com, for all stitches. Um, I write some stories about it, introducing some techniques and supplies and much, much more. And I keep, I, my, plan is to, my plan is to keep doing that. Our goal is to share this beautiful technique of Sashiko as well as, as well as the culture behind it. How the Japanese people thought, how the Japanese people's mindset was like. Because that kind of appreciating, the concept of appreciation, it can be like a stingy, but the concept of appreciation to what we have is probably a good influence to the society right now. So this is my goal. I hope I can see you in another live streaming. I usually speak in Japanese, but I'm always happy to receive any comments in English. I try my best to switch the language. If it doesn't happen, please keep sending me the comments. Um, I hope to see you in there sometimes in the future. Enjoy Sashiko. Have a nice weekend. Bye.